So what we're going to do here is get the equation of this exponential curve from the given two points. And the two points that are given um, are, are not the y-intercept. So this example, it's, it's a little bit easier if you're given the y-intercept. Um, so we're going to start when I'm giving you two points just on the curve. Okay, so to start off with, I wrote the general form of the equation twice because I'm going to use simultaneous equations to get one equation for the curve. And this is a general form here where uh, b represents the y-intercept, and I don't know what that is just yet. So I'm going to substitute these points into these two equations and see what I get. So for this equation right here, um, I'm going to substitute this set of points. And remember, 4 is x, and this is, this is y. Okay, so for this coordinate, I substitute x and y into x and y here, and I'm left with, with this. I still need to figure out b and a. And now I'll do the same thing with this set of points here, and to this guy. And I get 8.64 equals b times a squared. Now what I want to do with simultaneous equations is cancel out a variable. And in this case, I'm going to cancel out b first by dividing this equation by this equation. All right, so I'll just set that up to see what it looks like. All right, so I set up my two equations, and which equation you divide by, I want, I want to try to keep my exponents positive. So I put the higher degree power on top. Now I divide, I divide each part of the equation. So I'll divide the number parts first. 12.4416 divided by 8.64. And I'll get a value for that. When I divide these two, I get 1.44. The equal signs don't cancel out. I still want an equation. But the b variable does. All right? Remember, these are connected by multiplying, so I can cross-cancel these two b's. And what's left is a to the fourth divided by a squared. And when we divide powers, we subtract the exponents. So I get a squared. Now at this point, we should know how to solve for a. The opposite of squaring something is square rooting it. And I get 1.2 for the base of my power. I'm just going to box that because that's half of it right there. Okay, and if you're asking why, why I didn't plus or minus square root that, it can't be a minus because this is a, this is a growth curve. This is increasing, and in the growth curve, this, this base is going to be positive. So now what I do is I take that A, and I substitute it back into either equation to solve for B. I'll substitute it back into this equation, just because it's a lower power, but it doesn't matter. That's what I get when I substitute it back in. Uh, simplify this. 8.64 equals uh, 1.2 squared. Well, that's 1.44. Uh, write that correct, so that's the coefficient, and that's the variable. Finally, to solve for b, I just divide by the coefficient, which is 1.44. And that value gives me what the y-intercept would be, and this gives me 6. Okay, so what I do now is uh, substitute these numbers back into the general form of the equation. And once I have the equation, I can find out any x or y value along the curve. Okay, now let's try a decay curve. So a de uh, decay curve means that my um, base of the power is going to be between 0 and 1. And let me put some coordinates on this curve. Okay, before I start this one, just you've got to remember, if it's a de decay curve, then th this base of the power is going to be a fraction or a decimal between 0 and 1. Okay, it's not going to be a number greater than 1 like, uh, like our previous one was. It was uh, 1.2. So this guy is going to be smaller than 1.2. Uh, do the same steps. So I'll take this coordinate and substitute the x and y values into general form here. 
All right, this one works out to be 40 equals b times a to the 1, or just b times a. But I'm not going to simplify it just yet. And then I do it for this coordinate. Okay, got my two equations. Now I'm going to divide the two, and I'll put this equation on top, uh, just because the a to the fourth is a higher power than a to the first. And I'm going to leave that as a to the first, and you'll see why. Okay, so I divide my two equations. And like in the previous problem, I'll divide these numbers first. The b's cancel out, and I'll divide these powers, remembering that I subtract the exponents. a to the fourth divided by a to the one is a cubed, and that's why I left that one there, just to remember to subtract uh, the exponents. And the opposite of cubing something is taking the cube root. And I'm going to get a small number here, and let's see what I get. And I get a value of 0 0.8, and I check. Is that between 0 and 1? Yep, it is. So I take that, and I'll probably substitute it back into this equation, because that's a simpler equation. I don't have any, um, that's just a to the first, not a to the fourth. I get 40 equals b times 0 0.8. I don't need to put that to the first power. So to solve for b, I just divide by 0 0.8. So I get a y-intercept of 50, and my equation is y equals 50 times 0 0.8 to the power of x. And I checked that, so that means my y-intercept way up here would be 0 0.50. Okay, and that's it. And that's how you get the equation when you're given two points on the curve and you don't have the y-intercept.